Hey, what's up? Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking after right, uh, doing that last episode, I was thinking of some times I spent with uh, Just, the DWC, right, and Graffiti. You know, those were good times, man. That's when everything was just fucking cool. There was no one else writing, like I said, they just got done tearing the fuck out of each other, like MQ, JA, Trake, and this one and that one. Even Louie 167, Hard Rocks, Jew, Tabor, uh, all them fucking dudes, Tyke, uh, everyone was just going ape shit. <clears throat> it's right after the trains died, even when the trains were still running, that whole group of people, they were just tearing shit the fuck up. All of them. <clears throat> Yeah, Tabor TFT was in there. Louis 167 was Tanner. So I actually bumped into them. Well, Tabor I used to meet when I was married and lived in the Bronx. He used to work in this uh, stationary art supply store or something like that. The Shipman's, I believe the name of it was, off the Grand Concourse. So Tabor I knew. I'm actually down with TFT. My man Blake threw me down that shit a long time ago. <clears throat> yeah, man. When we used to hit the sixes, Blake used to write... Uh, Cash, TFT, with Coco, 106th Street, yeah, I used to hang out with those dudes, threw me down with that shit, but, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Tabor, and we actually bumped into him once, it was on 116th Street, I forget, we were uptown, we were buying um, marijuana or cocaine or some crazy shit, and we bumped into these guys, and Louis 167, and doing like villains, I mean, street right there, <clears throat> I mean, it was late at night, about 12 o'clock at night or something, so on 116th Street, right across the Latin Valley, it's like a garbage can where you would throw your, um, the restaurants would throw them. It's got like a lid. It's like a small dumpster, but not construction. It's more like the restaurant industry. You know, it's a small little dumpster with wheels on it. The garbage trucks actually have these things that pick it up like that. <laughs> small little guys, but yeah, these guys were standing on top of it doing these big villains and shit. They were tearing shit the fuck up. They also believe that he had Tech and M too, or BS and M. Yeah, that's around when he really hopped in on the pitch. All YKK. Well, the whole city was fucking destroyed, man. These people were going ape shit. And. <clears throat> It's funny because at that point also, like 1990, when I left, when I said I really wasn't writing, I would just do four or five things a year, <clears throat> like big blockbusters. But I'm going to show you that kind of blockbuster I'm talking about. I actually found one, which is going to bring me into my story here. I found a picture of one I did with this blue paint that I stole from Yankee Stadium. Now, they were painting the four train area of the outdoor elevated platforms and station, 161st Street, um, Yankee Stadium stop. <clears throat> now, up above, that goes into Manhattan, first up from underground, coming up across from Yankee Stadium, very famous stop by. I'm sure all you guys have seen pictures of the place. Or, possibly even walk there to go see a baseball game or something like that. They open those big metal gates. Do well, you remember when they painted that shit blue? Well, that's when I stole all that blue. Yeah. That was like 89. They were repainting that shit. I remember Smith and Sane and them and had the black where you would put the posters up. You know, they would put the posters on these black painted things. Swatch had a lot of that shit too. Anyway, they were painting that whole fucking area blue. And it's been a while, man. That shit's been smashed. Even at that point, you still had the Mitch 77 piece when you come up before you go underground there. That was still there. And they were painting this shit a blue, like a blue blue. I don't even know if you could call it a true blue, like where it fall on the spectrum. But it's almost like the color, of, well, you can look at the blue if you just Google Yankee Stadium. And I'm going to show you pictures of something I did with this blue paint. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, they were painting that shit and they had some wood stuff there. And, I was coming down from the Bronx from seeing my girlfriend at that time. I have not moved up there yet. So this is around 1988, 1989-ish. As I'm looking around, I see a construction site. So, Like I said, I have people, man, down on Mulberry Street. They buy all that shit off me. Power tools, I love it. So I can get good money for good shit, you know, generators, all types of shit. I'm peeking through the hole, you know. So I see all these things, buckets of um, paint, blue paint, and they're like five-gallon buckets. Hold on, I can actually grab a five-gallon bucket real quick. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oi, oi. <laughs> 
I got my fucking nice shit out of it. I got to hit my collarbone. Yeah, I shouldn't have did that. All right, here we go. See, this is a five-gallon bucket. All right, these things here are a five-gallon bucket. All right, so <clears throat> they have these things. They have them things filled blue paint. Right, the blue I'm talking about that they painted Yankee Stadium Station. At. It's like a true blue or like a police car blue, like the blue stripe and. NYPD, the blue they use, that I would say is probably the closest blue I could come to it. I mean, we're not going to go down to um, royal or indigo blue areas like that. It's just, I guess, the most common basic blue you can fucking think of. Anyway, <clears throat> buckets of that shit like that. Now, how did I know that that was blue? Because I seen they had one open, right? And I could see they actually had one of them little dishes with the rollers and shit had this blue paint all over it. So I said, yo, I should take that shit. It's good fucking paint. Because that's that like industrial, oil-based, like fire escape type shit. You know, it's like real oily and thick and lasts forever and ever and then ever. And that one actually did what I did with this. So, well, one of them did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it lasts a long time. It was lasted from 1990 until maybe three years ago. Four years ago, yeah, in 2021, that shit lasted like 16 years, 15 years, and the one I did there, yeah, taking 90 to 2000, 2000, to, uh, yeah, about 17 years that fucking thing lasted. Anyway, <clears throat> and it would still be there. So what I did is, <clears throat> now this was up on the four train elevator platform. The D train also connects and switches. Now, I would always like to get on the D train, so this way it's a little closer to where I had to go meet my girlfriend. She was living at that time. I'd get out on the D train up off of the uh, Grand Concourse. So, <clears throat> I said, shit, I should grab this fucking blue paint. This is good shit. <clears throat> Do some big rollers with this shit or something, you know? Well, no one was really doing rollers, except like I've explained in past videos. You had Smith and Sane in them doing a lot of these roller things and stuff. And, on subways, actually. I, not out in the streets, just on subways. But maybe they were doing them on the streets. Who am I to judge? I, I found all this blue paint. Now nine. I took about nine or... A, I think I took about nine or ten of them fucking things. So anyway, I grabbed like two in each arm. Now these things are fucking heavy when they're filled with paint. I was young and strong. I did like a deadlift guy up. I go from the four train elevated platform, right? I bring them down the flight of stairs, down into the D train, which is still underground. The D train never comes up in that area. It comes up out in Brooklyn somewhere. But <clears throat> now I take these fucking four that I got, go into the fucking um, emergency exit in the tunnel, and I leave them there. Then I go back up to the fucking, yeah, actually I did this about three times. <clears throat> I go up back to get more paint. I go up to the four train elevator platform. I grab another, this time I think I just grabbed one each arm. That second one, they were like falling and my hands were hurting and shit like that when I tried to grab two because I thought originally I was just going to do one run for it. Just grab as much as I can and that's it, keep it moving. But <clears throat> I started conking out and shit so that's when I came up with the idea to throw some of this shit in the tunnel. You know, <clears throat> that's what I wanted to film. Like I said, I bring more now. <clears throat> this time I'm just doing them by two. Two and two, and I bring them into the tunnel and I'm stashing them like I'm like a fucking squirrel stashing nuts for the winter and shit. Then I go back and I do it again. I have about maybe 11 of these fucking things, you know. <clears throat> and about 11 of them, maybe. Then I actually took two of them with me to go home. Like, I, I, yeah, after I stuffed the whole mess of them, squirreled away is the word we'll use. After I squirreled away about eight or nine of these things, I actually had two more that I just got on the train with and went home with and brought them home. <clears throat> and with those two, I'm going to show you what I did. It's coming up in this video. You know, big blue ones, and that shows you the year, too. It's actually a year. I, I never write years. I always look at it as a waste of paint. But in that particular one, it's when I'm going up to the Bronx. And I believe it says, Deborah, I love you. And it has the date that we started becoming boyfriend and girlfriend and the current date, which was... July 4th, 1990. Now, being I never write shit like that, you could say that that is honestly me saying goodbye. I'm out. I'm going in fucking up to the Bronx and chilling. Like, that's it. Like, what I was doing 
on my uh, time away from graffiti. I was still doing more graffiti than most people. Do you get me? Like, it's hard to explain, man. But I'm doing huge smashing shit. Like I just explained in the last video, you know, people, oh, yeah, but all city counts. Let me fucking tell you something about all city, man. I went all city. This whole thing I just explained is me going all city, if you think about this. Look at it, right? Right. I start up in the Bronx. I'm doing these big things like this big blue RD that's going to appear. It was on the Potemkin building. People know about it. You try to go over the 59th Street Bridge without seeing it. You know, well, back then it's impossible. You take the tramway, you see it. You're on the bridge, the upper deck. It's fucking looking right at you for 17 to 18 years. These are the kind of spots I was getting when I don't even count myself as a writer. I mean, I, maybe you guys should, but I don't count myself that way. I'm just out there keeping my pouty dry. You know, you got to, you know, you get the little, you know, you want to get down. You want to get, you know, you want to put it in. So that's what I was doing in those years. Everyone else, yeah, tear shit up all you want. But look at this picture. I'm doing those big things in the Bronx. This one particular one happens to be near Queensbridge in Manhattan. The Queensboro Bridge between First and York Avenue. Is where this particular one is that I did <clears throat> during the time I wasn't doing graffiti. That's the way it was. I was doing shit like this when I'm saying I'm not even writing graffiti because to me it's still not at a level of writing graffiti. I mean, you get me? Like, you could come out with a tag in a fucking mailbox, but that ain't writing. I mean, I mean yes, technically you Doing the motion, the muscle movement, you're writing graffiti, but I mean, you can't go on the internet and go, oh, it's on. It, nah, like, I just, something like that. I was just with my head in the sand like an ostrich. It's just me, you know, playing around, having a little fun. And this is the type of thing I would do when I'm having fun, you know. <clears throat> so now, yeah, let's get back to this real fast. We're going to go through it. I'm doing big, huge things like that for those four years in the Bronx and near the Queensboro Bridge, right? Now that's the Bronx, right? Then I get divorced. I moved down to Staten Island, right? right? Now I just got done explaining it to you. I was hanging out with pretty much the top, top dogs out in Staten Island, like Sims, you know, Joey Sims, and Asic, and even that gold guy I was fucking jumping around with. You know, all these people that are clapping over them. That's Staten Island covered, right? Now, didn't I just get done saying that I was jumping around with Skay doing Brooklyn and Queens, right? With huge, huge, big blockbusters. And I was the king of Manhattan. So now, is there any borough I don't got in that conversation? Okay. So please, just easy on that shit about I never went all city, okay? Because that right there is me going all city in the course of four fucking years. Probably harder than anyone you fucking even mention, okay? But now let's get back to it. I'm with Josh. 1994 ish. Nah, nah, 96 ish. Everyone stopped. Like I said, this is after Louis 167, uh, Hard Rocks, and um, MQ, JA. They just got done destroying the fucking city and just destroying each other. No one's writing anymore at this point. I, right, me, Robert Dyer, come out with Justin and decide now is a good time to fuck shit up. So we come out of the blue and just start fucking destroying shit, just going over all that mess that everyone else created. Like, oh yeah, these people were like, it's fucking like civil war and shit. Destroy. I thought that was cute. That, that was funny. And that's what I mean by that. And people could start getting swollen about that shit. But people have to actually like fighting and getting locked up and beating each other up and doing this and for all these spots. And then they're like, Everyone disappeared, like I said. Easy was gone. Cost was gone. Uh, J.A. wasn't right anymore. He wasn't around here anyway. MQ, they were all gone. It just left me and Just. Like, in a fucking, when it comes to graffiti, it was a fucking ghost town. So we're like, hee hee -haw! Like, yo, we just ripped through shit. Ripped through shit. Man. I'm going to tell you some funny stories, but one time, yeah, 13th, uh, 13th Street, Horatio, it's like maybe one or two blocks 
off of the West Side Highway where they used to park a lot of trucks. I used to like to do a loop or two around there, make sure I get all them trucks and shit, you know, and just keep it going. Yeah, that was a little, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, this particular time we're doing gates, right? It's about three in the morning. I do my RD tag, you know. <clears throat> I give the can to Just, right? Just like, yo, hold up, hold up, wait. Yo, that's that fucking um, Captain Picard. Now, let me mention, Just is a Star Trek fan. Like, he actually has the little model, or he used to back then. It's like a metal version of it. Like, he modeled like the Enterprise. It's on a nice little uh, stand and shit on a shelf. And he had a lot of paraphernalia, would be the word. Yeah, a lot of collectible items dealing with Star Trek. You know? He was a fan, and now... Patrick Stewart somehow, <laughs> it's crazy, but Patrick Stewart, I can't even spit this shit out right, he just pops up, right, like, I swear, it was Patrick Stewart, like, he's like, yo, so Justin's like, oh, hold up, <laughs> yo, that's Patrick Stewart, I want to get his autograph, right, so I'm like, all right, man. so his car, we normally don't do this, but it was so dead out, we normally don't park that close to the location we're riding on, but, you know, he goes in his car and gets a pen or paper, <laughs> At this point, it is Patrick Stewart. Like I said, he just appeared, like, in the middle of the avenue. I would only have to assume that this man hopped out of some kind of a car that led him out there, whether it's a taxi or a friend or some Uber and all that shit wasn't around back then. But <clears throat> somehow, this guy was right there, you know? Maybe half a block, about four parking spaces away. But look at him. <clears throat> We're like, yo, oh, get his attention or something, you know? Justin has the pen in his hand and the paper and shit. So, <clears throat> it hogs and heifers, yeah, because that's where he ran in. We were like, yo. <clears throat> Justin's like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. So the guy looks at us, or Patrick Stewart. You know who he is? Also, Xavier in X Men, with the uh, telepathic powers. He can talk to the other mutants and tell them, yeah, 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 go get this guy, go get that guy. Yeah, that one, uh, Xavier. And uh, Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart is his name. He also played. Uh, the, Fucking Moby Dick, man. He played Ahab. Great movie. At one point, I believe he played Ahab too in Moby Dick. You know, a later version, of course, than the originals. But anyway, this guy looks enough. Just such fucking booking, man. You know, he was pretty old. I mean, this is going back, but I mean, he was still bold and gray haired, man. This dude was like, Phew. <laughs> so we're like, yo, hold up, where are you going? Yo, 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 come here. Like, yo, we're running after him. I mean, I guess we could say we're unsavory looking characters, you know, with a kind of, you know, the dude flipped the fuck out, man. He ran into this bar called um, Hogs and Heifers. So that's where this shit happened, literally right on that, that was the corner of the street, where every Hogs and Heifers, because that's where the guy ran into, I think it's Hooters type deal. You know, you got the women with the big tits and shit, and they give you drinks and stuff. Yeah, same type of deal, but it's called Hogs and Heifers. So he ran into the front door, and then just tried to get into the front door. And when Justin was trying to get in the front door, like he bounces, blocked him and shit, you know? So I'm like, no, 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 I'll come through the back. <laughs> so there's a back door in the place, you know? So I go to get in the back door, there's a bounce there too, but I kind of just work my way past him, I don't even hear him or see him or not, you know? So I'm like this, I'm looking in the place, like, where'd this guy go, you know? And I could tell everyone in the place, like even patrons, even the women are serving the drinks with the big breast kisses, um, yeah, hopping around, everyone is just on guard, like looking at the, like the place was silent, you know, like the bouncers are walking over to the beach, I'm like, where do you go? It's all right, so I go in to check the men's room, he's not in there, I check the ladies' room, you know, I don't see the guy. So I'm looking in the kitchen, I hear all these pots and pans start falling off the walls and shit, you know. So I was like, yo, this shit in my mind, like Justin didn't actually get in, but he's at the side door which isn't too far from me, it's a very small place. And like everyone was standing up, like, what are you trying to do that old man, you know? I mean, no one was saying nothing, but you could see like the whole place was silent, like everyone's eyes was on me. You know, so I'm like, yeah, this shit probably don't look right. Like they don't realize we're just trying to get this guy's autograph. I mean, this shit looks like we're probably like some crazy shit, like out of misery, like you've been a dirty birdie. You ever see that shit, misery with uh, James Conn and that, that, that Kathy Bates? Yeah, they probably think about some shit like that. Like, we got a hog tie to do and throw it in the trunk of a car or something. I guess, you know, so I was like, yo, Josh, man, you ain't getting your autograph, man. We bounced. But yeah, I picture like that dude ran into that place when he must have ran inside there. It was like, oh, oh, like here's the door and shit. Like, you gotta come to me. He's like, oh, please, help me, help me. They're trying to kill me. Oh, my God. It's like, yo, and they hit him. Like, they literally took that guy. He's probably like a Patrick Stewart. Help. <laughs> 
Yeah, and they stuck his ass way in the back. And yo, it's like everyone was a part of this shit. So, yo, that shit had me dying, man. Yo, I had so many fun times with Just, man. Like I said, that's when Just and fucking graffiti was just cool, man. There was no problems, no more violence, no more crime, just fucking graffiti. That was a good time, man. I was fucking riding off into the sunset with that graffiti, boy. I was tearing shit the fuck up. Yeah, man, just a funny guy, man. I remember once, I don't know, we, bring, uh, we went a few times to like this Russian bar, you know. And you're going to realize, tattooing was banned in New York City, maybe even America, <clears throat> in like the 1960s because of hepatitis, hepatitis C. And it only started picking up about 1996 or something. But these dudes, like, I told them, like, bar, it's like a Russian bar. All oh, the women are beautiful. All oh, the eyes and the bodies. All oh, the eyes are like fucking blue ice. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. In fact, she was going out with one of them for a week or two. I remember she slapped the shit out of me. I forget what happened. But yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we're going in this place. You can see these big, like, Russian dudes and shit with gold chains and shit. They have all these tattoos coming up. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, damn, maybe there's, like, some mobsters and shit, you know? But, yeah, we were actually going there. I don't know what, why or what. But, yeah, we were going to that place. It was, like, right off of Barrack. It's, it's still there. I actually see it. It's, like, a short white building where everyone always climbs up on the roof and does tags. And it's got, like, vines and shit growing over it, like ivy. And it's short. It's, like, a one-story thing. It's white with, like, black trim around all the, <clears throat> the windows, the door is solid black. And it's... Right on the corner, like how the flat iron building is, is that's the same place, and that shit was some wild shit back then, man. I don't know how to deal with that shit, but yeah, them dudes weren't playing. They do it too, man. These fucking dudes look like fucking WWF wrestlers and shit, you know? Yeah, wild shit, man. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm just getting them hanging out, picking up girls. And the music was not even American. The music was Russian, the people were Russian. <clears throat> Russian themed, and that was fun shit, man. I just loved that place, man. That was some good times. And like I said, the women, oh, so fucking, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that was some good times, man. Good times. Me and Justin, we used to do all types of fun shit, man. I, I could tell you stories, but <laughs> like I said, we were just out there just smashing everything. After everyone left the place, it was really like a graveyard. Like a of, like, dead graffiti and shit. We were just like, yo, fuck all this shit, man. Like, hey, you know, like, everyone was gone. And then they all were like, yo, get them! You know, everyone started kicking back up. Our whole new generation, like I explained before, started getting back into it. <clears throat> but, yeah, <clears throat> then a lot of guys that just, like, went through hell. You know, you had, like, a BS bomb squad you said, go at it with YKK and... You had um, J.A. and M.Q. and D.M.S. and this thing and that thing and Trake. And, <clears throat> then you had all these, like, other groups that were just, like, dirty dogs, you know. Yeah, it was wild. Now all that shit just came to an end. That's when we came hopping up in there. Yeah, I really haven't stopped until, I'd say about three or four years before my arrest. So I, I remain just solid to about... I could claim it to about 2015. Until I kind of, yeah, because you got to realize I came out with this dude RE again later on. Like, this, I still didn't even meet RE yet. Like, uh, like you know, you guys think that <clears throat> I've been around with Ever, but I haven't even bumped into this guy RE yet and even started that whole amount of damage. So, we're getting there, man. We're getting there, people. Just hold on to your seats, man. We'll be there. Yeah. I'm going to put on some pictures of some of this shit that I did. They stole the paint. I could tell you something funny. Yeah, but it goes into the big RD that I used to do that was face of Roosevelt Brown. It's like, I would, we used the blue paint, but not necessarily for an RD. <clears throat> and they brought in a bunch of beige paint, and they were tired that we wrote so much. They actually had a room in this fucking place behind that shit where it was behind the heliport, which is that Pan Am scene in Scarface, the movie. Uh, yeah. They actually started filling a room with like beige paint, like the same beige that's on the highways. 
So it's like I'm using this blue paint that we got from Yankee Stadium that I stole from Yankee Stadium, you know what I mean? That they were using the paint, and now they're buffing me with a other, other room of paint that I wound up robbing too. I took all that beige paint too, and I was like, fuck it, every time they want to come here, see they figured I'll stock up on paint in a room so they don't have to travel all the way to some place to get the paint and then bring it to buff the graffiti. This way it's kind of close to the graffiti. But I started stealing that shit. There was so much of it, I couldn't even steal it all. I actually started just throwing it in the fucking river. Man. Yeah, gallons, like five pound gallons. I was doing that shit like all night once. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me show you. You'll see some of these blue. You'll see the blue I'm talking about. I got one big one. And try and look at the dates, because you'll see that's the day I started going out with her. And around that day is the day I left when I did that. It was 7 4 1990. I believe. Yeah, that was that summer, man. Shit was pretty fucking bad, man. And she, by like that October or September, yeah, by autumn, she's like, "Yo, dude, man, I, I'm not doing this shit no more, man. You gotta, you know, I, you guys are bugging down here. Like, I, I, you know, she, well, you know, my girlfriend, I we guess would say uh, she gave me an ultimatum: come with me now up to the Bronx and goodbye. You know, so I'm coming with you, baby. And boom, boom, bash, bow. <laughs> 